Hi everyone, Jonathan here. Um, today I will be going over the Death Gull, which is the most fearsome monster I've ever created. No, it's not, but it was a lot of fun to do. Um, the idea for the Death Gull kind of impromptu, spontaneously uh, emerged uh, in my last video. My last video recap, I should say. Um, so this is just a dumb one, just a dumb fun little drawing. Uh, I, you may have seen, drew a couple roughs, and now I'm settling on a pretty good uh, image. So this, I'm very pleased with this piece, not because it's very good or anything, although I do think it turns out pretty well. No, I'm very pleased with this one because my tab six uh, pen nib broke in my pocket and it broke like laterally across the tip of the pen it didn't break like a nice clean the nib fell out or anything so I had to fish it out with a pin jabbing a pin into a pin sized hole to try to finagle out the stem of a uh, stylus nib once I extracted said nib, I put in one of my replacement nibs only to find that suddenly I don't have pressure sensitivity in my tablet stylus anymore. That was a big bummer. So I went ahead and bought uh, another pen online, which is starting to become a very expensive hobby. And uh, yeah, this one I used and it has pressure sensitivity again, and so I'm pleased. <laughs> I'd be more pleased if the nib didn't break, or I guess if upon breaking, when you replace the nib, if the nib would maintain the same level of pressure sensitivity it starts with. I don't know that I fully understand why that is. If you look at the replacement nibs, they are essentially identical to the nib that the pen comes with. Like, I thought maybe the nib in the pen was spongier and hence it had more pressure sensitivity, but no, it's just a nib. I don't get it. But anyway, I'm back to being functional. Here I am painting a bunch of rows of teeth inside of the mouth of the death gull. Um, teeth are a common uh, visual um, what am I trying to say? I use teeth very uh, regularly to depict, um, I guess, a level of ferocity in a creature that I am painting. Um, I have a wall of acrylic paintings of monsters that I sit in front of, and um, they're all portrait style paintings, like it's mostly a bust. And um, the first thing I always see anyway is the teeth, I don't know, teeth? are primally scary to me. <laughs> Not like teeth are disgusting or anything, but just the idea of bared teeth. It's like you see it right before you hear something scream. So it's like the the one visual indicator of just horrible noises, or it's a visual indicator of horrible noises that has always resonated with me. Um, I don't know if it's because I saw horror movies at such a young age or what exactly, but... Uh, yeah, the teeth are um, teeth are powerful uh, visual ways to convey um, the sound of terror, basically. So here I am bloodying up the death gull. Um, there's really not a lot of thought behind this one. Just trying to make it look as nice as I can, and then it becomes a bit of a lighting exercise for me. Uh, so. Um, I wanted to make the water look, you know, California nice, and I wanted to make it look like the sun was playing off of the side of the death gull appropriately, and the shadows too. Um, I do touch this one up a little bit in Photoshop after I'm done painting on it, so it never quite gets to the... So it looks a little different in the final numbers, but the idea... But the basic idea remains the same. Um, I do end up cleaning up that dock. <clears throat> I do end up cleaning up that dock in the background a little bit more too, um, just making it look a little bit more like a like a pier. And then I think I make the clouds a little bit more. Uh, 
and then I work on the clouds a little bit more too. I wasn't sure if I wanted him to have pupils. Um, minor note. I decided to give him pupils because it gives him that sort of derpy look. That, uh, you know, even a horrifying leech-faced monster pigeon would still be pretty brain dead, I would think. Our seagull. Um, excuse me. Sorry. Sorry, Death Gull. Uh, so I wanted to make sure it looked pretty stupid, <laughs> even though uh, it could be scary. Kind of like a one zombie. Uh, you know, one zombie. I don't know that I would. <sighs> excuse me. Kind of like one zombie. I don't know that I would be in abject terror of one zombie, especially if I knew zombies existed. I mean, it would be frightening the same way a bobcat outside your window would be frightening or something. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's sort of the, the uh, efficacy, I guess, I wanted to give this gull. Like, he's scary if you just stand there. But, you know... Look at him. What a stoopy. Uh, one thing that was kind of fun in this one was to... I don't paint sunsets uh, all that often. It's not really my bag. Um, I do, obviously. You know, I'm a human. I like the colors of a sunset and everything. But... Uh, it doesn't, I don't know, it's hard to capture and on a good day, but I wanted to try to capture uh, the feel of the sun going down, I guess. Nice peaceful, nice peaceful scene. It actually ends up kind of looking like a postcard to me in a sort of messed up way. Um, if, uh, if anybody is feeling um, bad for the Death Gull, like, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's within the realm of possibility that you could be feeling sympathetic towards this creature. I think it's the derpy eyes. So um, if anyone's feeling bad for it, I have good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is, is I decide to paint a beak on him at the very end just so that, you know, if you want to tell yourself it's a normal pigeon, you don't have to feel so bad. Because everything else on the scene looks pretty cheerful and nice, and it, it definitely looks out of place. Um, you know, a bit of subversive design. It's pretty basic. Um, I want to say it's pretty obvious, uh, but it doesn't mean that it's less unsettling. But that doesn't make it any less unsettling. So, um, yeah, I end up putting a beacon at the end. So, you know, you and I know that he's the death goal, but we don't have to see it all the time, I guess, if it bothers you. At some point, I put a worm in his mouth. Um, yeah, I don't know if I meant it to be like his entrails, because I specifically said when talking about a monster that I would paint, you know, it's not like I could paint a gull with his entrails hanging out. So I specifically stated that. So I at least attempted to paint some entrails hanging out of him, but it just kind of looked like a worm. And then once it looked like a worm, worm plus seagull kind of was like, oh, that's perfect. But the more I thought about it, like, I don't know. Just It looks cool. I don't hate it, but it just was one more thing. And I just kind of wanted to wrap it up at that point. But yeah, that's what that was. So anyway, um, this one's coming to a close. Uh, like, as, as promised, here will come the beak. And, uh, you know. Here I'm painting in some saliva into his gaping mouth hole. I feel like the gaping mouth hole looks pretty good, and that's really the primary focus of this. So yeah, here is the um, final render. Um, and as promised, I will put a beak on him so nobody has to feel scared anymore. Perfect. 
Uh, I don't know. He almost looks scarier like that. If you liked what you saw here, and you want to see more, please visit me at uh, artstation.com slash creaturecraft. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you.